Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to create a 3D cube intro animation in HitFilm Express. Uh, before we begin, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. You can also check out other videos I have made for HitFilm Express. Link will be in the description. And also consider subscribing to this channel as I keep posting new videos every week. So uh, let's uh, start with this tutorial. Here I am inside HitFilm Express. And uh, as you can see, I have uh, imported the logos that I'll be using in order to create this animation. You can obviously use your own logo. The first thing we'll do is create our cube. A cube has six sides, but we are only going to create four sides for our cube. Uh, we, won't, we will not display the top and the bottom part of the cube. Uh, so we can create a new composite shot and I'm going to call this side one. And for the duration, this entire animation will be four seconds long. The width will be 300 and height will be 300 as well and click on OK. Let's create a new plane layer and uh, we can give it any color that you want. Click on OK. Then the effects, we're going to search for fill color and apply it on this layer. We are going to go back to our media panel and duplicate this composite shot three times so that we have four of these. So I'm going to hit Ctrl D or Command D if you are on Mac. So just do that. So we have four of these and we can just rename this to side two. This one will be side three. And the last one will be side four. Let's go to side two and change its color. So we can select that layer, go to controls. And since we already applied fill color, it's pretty easy to change the color. So we can just, you know, change it to any color that we want. Do the same thing in side three. Let's go to side four and change that color as well. Okay, so you have four of these shapes. Now we need to combine these together to create our cube. So for that, we'll create a new composite shot and I'm going to call this animation. Let's make this four seconds long. 1920 by 1080. Click on OK. Let's bring in all these four composite shots inside this comp. And we're going to turn these into 3D. Click on Yes to add a camera. And now what we want to do is we want to position the anchor point. So right now, the anchor point is right in the middle. And we're going to move it to the left edge of this shape. So we're going to expand, go to transform and change the anchor point. I'm going to set this to around negative 150. I'm going to copy this value and paste it in the position so that it brings it back in the center. Then we are just going to leave it as it is for now. I'm going to copy this, copy the layer. I'm going to select that. Right click copy or command C. I'm going to select the second layer and hit command shift V or you can right click click on paste attributes. So this will paste the anchor point and the position value on the second layer. I'm going to click on paste. And also if you click on this icon orbit around selected layers, you can just, you know, drag it on to the viewer and you can, you know, see this in a 3D uh, viewport. Then I'm going to set the rotation to negative 90. So now our shape is on the left side and uh, that's completely fine. But I want this to be on the right side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the control key on the keyboard and click on this position value and it'll just switch it to the other side. And I'm just going to copy again, right click, copy and go to side three and paste the attributes on this layer. But before that, let's parent our side four layer to side three. So I'm going to go to none, click on that and set select side three. Now we can just, you know, paste the attributes here. Click on paste. And all you have to do is go to transform and hold the control key and click on the position value so that it's on the left side. And I can see that if I turn off the side three layer, you'll see the side four layer in the same position as well. That is because we parented the side four layer to side three. And these two basically have the same value. Now what we can do is on side four, expand that and go to transform and set the uh, rotation to 90. Change the anchor point to 150, should be negative 150 and position to 150 and we'll just push it back in the Z space. So make sure these are the values and you'll be good to go. Now, if I reset the camera, so I can just select the new camera layer, hit command R on the keyboard to reset it, or you can right click and click on reset. We'll just bring everything back to the default values. And here we have our cube. So you can again, you know, rotate it around. You can see that we have this cube over here, right? So let's reset this again. 
now i'm going to create a new point layer and i'm going to call it control i'm going to pair in all these layers to that control layer and make sure the control point layer is also 3d so now if we uh, try if we move anything if we change anything you can see that we are able to control all these four layers with just one single layer um, now uh, if i just rotate this you can see that it's not actually rotating from the middle over here let me just um, show it in this angle over here so you can see the rotation is uh, from this point over here i want the rotation to happen right from this point the middle over here and in order to do that we need to change the anchor point value on the control point layer so let me just show you if i go to active camera click on that and set select top view you can see that the control point layer is right over here we want this to be in the middle all right so let's expand this go to transform and change the anchor point value and try to bring it in the center and the value that we're going to use is 150 so that it will be right in the center all right so let's uh, close out of that and now if we go to the active camera view and now we can rotate it and you can see that it rotates from the center now let's create our animation so make sure your playhead is at the very first frame create a keyframe on scale and rotation set the scale to zero go to two second and set the scale to 100 and set the rotation to negative one so now you will see that you have an animation like this I'm gonna select these two all these i'm gonna select all these keyframes convert the keyframes to manual bezier go into value graph and just hold the shift key and drag the handle to the left do the same thing with a rotation y as well so create a graph like this and now your animation will look something like this it will start fast at the beginning and then slow down at the end all right so now what we want to do is we'll create a new comp and we're going to call it logo and for the width we just set this to 250 by 250 click on ok and we just want to place our logo in this comp it's too big just scale it down till it fits within this composition close out of this and we're going to go to side one click on that and we're going to place our logo comp inside this comp and now if we go back to our animation comp you won't be able to see the logo because the color we have the same color the background and the logo so let me just add a fill color on the plane layer i have already done that so it's going to go to fill color and just change it to something else so now if you go back you can see that your animation will have the logo inside all right now what we want to do is let's um, go to side one and i'm actually going to get rid of the fill color and i'm going to use a color gradient on this so drag color gradient on it remove the fill color and the color gradient i'm going to move it to the top left uh, i'm going to move these points in the corners like that and make sure that the opacity is set to 100 and i'm going to also increase the ramp scatter so that we have a little bit of noise or texture in our logo i can just uh, copy this color gradient and i'm going to go to side 2 and paste this color gradient on it delete the previous fill color from there and i'm going to do the same thing with side three and side four let's go to side four paste the color gradient and delete the fill color from there okay so uh, if you don't like the color you can switch it with any color that you want and um, as you can see right now the start and the end color is black and white but you still see this blue color and that's because the blending mode is set to add if i set this to normal it will get it back uh, you know the main colors which is white and black so you can click on black and change it to any color that you want so uh, i'll just go with uh, maybe a blue color like that and click on ok i'm going to actually you know do this on all of these color gradient layers change the color to blue like so okay so now if you go back this is how it is going to look right now let me create a background layer i'm going to drag in this new plane put it at the bottom and rename this to bg select that layer and i'm just going to you know increase the size of it and also apply a fill color on this okay and um, for the color i'm going to change it i'm not going to keep it completely white let's uh, reduce the brightness to around 90 percent so it's not completely white it's just a little bit of lighter shade of white which is what we want 
now let's bring in our go to media panel and bring in our logo comp put it at the top of side one comp and uh, we'll just move it to two second mark just to differentiate it i'm going to apply a fill color on this real quick i will just get rid of it after some time i just want to just you know differentiate it from the other logo we have and as you can see the size is different on this so i'm going to just increase the scale a little bit so i'm going to set this to 108 and uh, i'm just going to like create a small animation on this like a zoom out animation it'll be really quick and uh, snap here so i'm going to create a scale keyframe there i'm going to move forward to like five frames so I'm going to hit the period key five times and I'm going to reduce the scale amount. So around, let's go with 80. All right. So now I'm going to select these two, create the keyframes to manual Bezier and create a graph like this. Okay. So we have a really quick zoom out animation. Now what I want to do is at this point, I'm going to remove, like I'm going to trim down these four composite shots select all these four and just you know trim it down when you do that you'll notice that all these four shapes will uh, disappear and you're all you're left with this logo uh, layer at the top so let's get rid of the fill color from here um, but before that let's um, you know go to background and i'm going to create a keyframe on color so um, let's go one frame backwards so i'm going to hit the comma key on the keyboard so we are at one second and 29th frame. I'm going to create a keyframe there. Let's uh, jump to the next frame, hit the period key and change the color here. So the color that I'll use is the same blue color. And uh, let's just make it a bit darker this time. Click on OK. Now you'll see that your background also changes at this time. I'm going to go to logo comp and delete the fill color from here. So now this is how it is going to look. So let's play this. Boom. A lot of things are happening at this point. You can see that this shape is getting disappeared. The background color changes and we have this quick animation going on over here. So what I can do is actually let's just, uh, you know, bring this one frame back. I'm going to select this layer, the logo comp and just move it slightly back a frame. So we have a more seamless animation. All right. So you can just, you know, play with the positioning and you'll have a really nice animation at the end. I think that that looks absolutely fine. Uh, so I'm going to stick with that. And what I like to do with any logo animation I create is I like to create a ba I like to create a drop shadow. So I'm going to create a new composite shot and I'm going to call this final. And in this final, what I'm going to do is go back to animation comp and I'm going to remove this background layer. Hit control or command X. We basically going to cut it from this comp and paste it in the final comp. So command V to paste it. Then I'm going to drag in the animation comp inside the final comp like that. You can see your animation here. I like to duplicate it, put it bottom and rename this to shadow. And then I'm just going to squash it down like so. And just move it down like that and apply a blur effect on this. Apply it on the shadow comp and just increase the blur amount. All right. So I think that really looks great. And, uh, you know, you can see that it just really improves your overall animation. You can play with the strength of the radius. And you can even apply a fill color on this and set the color to black. And you'll have a real, you know, drop shadow. And if it's too dark, you can, you know, obviously increase the radius or you can go to transform and reduce the opacity and uh, there you have it uh, you can also add a text layer in here uh, if you want to create a tagline or something but i want i want to keep it minimal so i think that's just it that's how you can create this animation inside it film express uh, so i hope this video was helpful if it was then please make sure you like the video and also subscribe to the channel thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one